at the beginning of this session, we will learn how to use GIS in any kind of sector in any discipline. But uh, if we discuss about it, how to use GIS in any discipline in any sector, it will take the whole day. So uh, I just make it shorter. Uh, how to use GIS in multidiscipline, including civil engineering, architecture, urban planning, environmental science, agriculture, and obviously in geography. So not only that, GIS can be used in any sector, although it is being used in many sectors, but I can say GIS can be used in any sector. And before that, I want to let you know something more. Uh, some of us consider GIS as a tool because they say uh, we are using just a tool of GIS in our subject. Uh, then let me give you an example. In your research work, you are using SPSS software, which is a software of statistics. Will you say that statistics is a tool which can be used in any sector? Same case in GIS. Uh, GIS is a subject and we are using a software of GIS. It could be Supermap, it could be another GIS software, we are using a software of GIS. So GIS is not a tool, GIS is a subject. We are using a particular software based on our requirement in our research, in our project. And in this lecture, sorry. In this lecture, we are going to learn GIS in civil engineering, GIS in architecture, GIS in computer science and engineering, GIS in agriculture, GIS in environmental science, GIS in urban planning and GIS in geography. First of all, <coughs> let's see GIS in civil engineering. If you are from civil engineer, you already know about your structural based project civil engineers can use gis to include a multitude of material data area history data and 3d gis maps to create standard design methodologies and in environmental based project of civil engineering work gis provides the overlay maps future growth plans industrial concerns land water resource and other natural elements so that engineers can make the least impactful decision. It is the combination of spatial data and non-spatial data. Sorry, I'm a little sick today. And uh, I just come back from the hospital. My mother is at hospital now. Just I came here quickly to attend this workshop. <laughs> Transportation. In transportation-based project in civil engineering, by using GPS in GIS technology, highly dynamic traffic data or rapidly changing flood levels can be shown alongside population change on the same map. As example, we can say Google map in where we can see the live update of the traffic in a particular network, is not it? In case of wastewater, GIS provides hydraulic data for water utility systems and combines customer information, water flow at various nodes and historical data to forecast water demand. In this case, <coughs> civil engineer needs to use the combination of spatial data and non-spatial data. Uh, if you want to know what is the spatial data and what is non-spatial data, it will take uh, more than one hour time. Uh, spatial data means the graphical feature data which is visualized in our GIS software and non-spatial data means the corresponding information with this graphical feature data. So for now, just consider this spatial data is graphical map and non-spatial data is the information regarding with that map. So for wastewater project, uh, a civil a GIS provides hydraulic data for water utility system and combines customer information, which is non-spatial data and water flow at various nodes and historical data to forecast water demand. Site analysis. GIS integrates environmental protection regions, city and zoning designation, soil and topographic maps for site analysis. And in case of survey, 
Surveyors can easily assess environmentally sensitive regions, forestry, government control, road network, previously established boundaries, and other vital information using GIS technologies. CAD integration. This one is more, most potential in case of civil engineering. Say uh, all of you are using AutoCAD to design your construction to uh, say 2D or 3D. You are using AutoCAD for your construction design work, but uh, GIS can create a coordinate system in, in AutoCAD to project maps without having to change CAD design or convert GIS data. So in this case, uh, by using GIS, it will give your construction design a real world position system by using which you can place your this design in Google map or Google Earth in any base map by using this real world position system, which, is, which will be provided by GIS. Now let's see GIS in architecture. Line of sight. If you are an architect, then definitely you already know about line of sight. GIS helps architects to plan the line of sight perfectly so that the buildings do not obstruct important features in the horizon. See the upper right image. You will realize this. And exposure to noise. GIS helps in urban high rise buildings to be designed and positioned in areas that have. Uh, little or no interference to the environment. And development planning, GIS helps in planning various development projects in urban areas to help citizens understand the importance of urban development holistically and the bigger picture with map and database. In here, they can see the map, not only the map, they will see the database also. If you present just only an image map, you can't consider this as GIS. If you want to make a GIS map, obviously you should have corresponding database also with this map. Crowd simulation. GIS helps in crowd simulation at time scale approaching real time. See the lower right corner image. Solar exposure. Harvesting light is easy to assess the suitability of installing solar panel on roofs using 3D GIS CT models and geometric information such as the field orientation and uh, area of the roof. In that case, I prefer SuperMap I desktop 10i software, which is very easy to create any 3D GIS based 3D model. So you can try it. And City Engine, assessing feasibility and plan implementation using City Engine improving urban planning, architecture, and overall design. Pedestrian behavior. Uh, to identify this, GIS can help to discern the possible movement of pedestrian and vehicles and help in creating artistic impressions of cities. And next one is shadow analysis. See on the right side image, which is showing the shadow map of a particular area of a particular feature. GIS helps to create exact impression of shadows that would be cast during every pre-construction phase of a project. Parking availability. GIS can also be used to determine the number of parking spaces that would be available and the amount of time that would be required to locate one. And integration of GIS and BIM. Do you know what is BIM? In architecture term, BIM means building information modeling. Operating a facility with BIM because of its ability to analyze information and integrate data from different system. So this is the power of GIS. Tangible landscape, which is most important in architecture sector. GIS can also be used to create life-size sketches of buildings and create proper models of the actual buildings that need to be constructed. Uh, Geodesign, which is a combination of geography and architecture, conceptualizing building plans with focus on stakeholders' participation and collaboration to closely follow natural system. See the lower right corner image.
Now let's see GIS in computer science and engineering. Uh, yes, GIS can be used in computer science and engineering also. Let's see how. In case of web GIS, see web and GIS. We will learn about web GIS in our further lectures also in this session. I will try my best to show you what is web GIS in simple way. Web GIS, which means the combination of web and GIS. So a computer engineer already know about web programming, but if he does not know about GIS, he can't create any web GIS based project. So why they need web GIS based project? Say a government company or a land based organization want to uh, publish a map with database in their web portal in where anyone can see land information with location based map uh, easily they can understand by clicking any area and see the land based information even land use type whatever they want so a organization want to create this type of web portal in where they can upload a web gis map for this purpose definitely they should hire a computer engineer who knows about GIS because without knowing GIS, a computer engineer can't create this web GIS project. You already know about web programming, but without learning GIS, he can't create this. Now, next is GIS based software development. There are many companies that are creating customized GIS based software. For this purpose, they are hiring computer engineer who knows about GIS. Say uh, in a marketing department, they want to create a software in where they want to uh, just split locations based on the salesperson, which area is most profitable and which area is uh, less profitable, which a salesperson is responsible for this area. They can easily identify the area based their marketing sales. You can say KPI of salesperson, which is key performance indicator. Easily can be identified by using this uh, web GIS based platform or, or a customized GIS software created only for that marketing department. They can create this customized GIS software. For this purpose, they need to hire a computer engineer who knows GIS. Now, third one is, you already know about it, ride sharing apps development. Who does not know about Uber? In our daily life, we are already using Uber. Uh, in here, what we can see, we can see a wonderful map in where uh, we can identify driver existing location. Even we can uh, give our pickup location, our destination point for our this ride. And easily we can see any geographic information in this ride sharing apps, which is a GIS because it is providing geographic based information. So any system which provides geographic information is known as GIS. So Uber is a type of GIS. If I say more deeply, it's a web GIS. So for this purpose, to create these apps, obviously we need a computer engineer who knows about apps development programming. And not only that, obviously he has to know about GIS. Without this, he can't develop these ride sharing apps. And fourth one is vehicle tracking software development vehicle tracking software in where we can track a particular vehicle uh, by watching a base map in where we can easily identify our um, car location our car movement speed and many more in this case obviously without map can we create this vehicle tracking software no so for this purpose the programmer the developer who is developing this tracking software obviously he should have the knowledge on GIS by which he, he can easily add a base map or a customized map or the organization own map in this vehicle tracking software. In my career, I also have created a vehicle tracking software in my GIS career. So I know this is most important for computer engineer. Now let's see GIS in agriculture. GIS can be used in agricultural sector. If I shortly say, agriculture mapping, soil analysis, crop information and data combination, LIS, assemble information as soil moisture, nutrients, elevation and topography to aid in the production of a map. 
store geospatial data and produce maps for land inventory, analyze and visualize agricultural environment, and we can increase the production by combining all of above information by using GIS. Now let's see GIS in environmental science. GIS is, GIS is already being used in environmental science. GIS applications are using, GIS applications are being used in forest fire management, oil spill and remedial measures, coal mine fire management, wastewater and management, natural resource management, air pollution and control, disaster management, and many more. In urban planning, already all of urban planners know how to use GIS in this field. So I'm not going to tell it briefly about this, but if I shortly say GIS in urban planning, GIS can be used in urban planning in resource inventory, creating land use maps and plans, planning application, analyzing socioeconomic and environmental data, land suitability analysis or site selection, and uh, measuring connectivity, impact assessment, evaluation, monitoring, and feedback. GIS in geography. GIS, which means geographic information system. So obviously it should be used in geography so there are many uses of GIS in geography. If I shortly say uh, in geographical analysis, geographic survey, environment analysis, disaster management, watershed, land suitability, land use mapping, and many more. If I, if I say the list of these topics in geography, it will take one hour time actually. <laughs> So this is how to use GIS in multidiscipline world. Now we are going to learn what is GIS actually. It's opening this wet. Till then, you can see this is the first super map online course. You can do it if you want, because super map is really great to do any 3D based GIS work and make it easy and then spark interface of GIS. And this is one and only uh, super map global online course in Udemy. What happened? So what we have learned actually, we can use GIS not in a particular field. We can play with GIS in multidisciplinary world, is not it? Now let's see what is GIS actually. I already have said GIS is not a tool. GIS is a subject we are using GIS software based on our requirement in our sectors. 
Now let's see what is GIS actually, what is desktop GIS and what is web GIS. Many of my learners is getting confused about desktop GIS and web GIS. And in my previous lecture, I already have said as GIS is being used in multidisciplinary world, uh, then let me give you an example. In my Sharia GIS school, I have uh, more than 16,000 learners from 180 countries who are learning GIS. And between those 16,000 learners, they are from many sectors. I have architecture who is learning GIS. I have civil engineer who is learning GIS. I have geographer, urban planner who is learning GIS from my Sharia GIS school. It's an online training platform. You can learn GIS from anywhere at any time, just only by using your computer or mobile. And uh, even I have a psychologist learner who is learning GIS. Can you believe this? A psychologist is using GIS in her research-based research -based analysis. So why she was learning GIS? Because she was doing criminal-based psychology. In a chapter, she was doing uh, location-based analysis, uh, what type of crime is occurring in what type of area. For this purpose, she was learning GIS from my online training platform. So GIS can be used in any sector, not many sectors. GIS can be used in any sector, even banking sector also. Few years ago in India, I have given training uh, in a bank for their GIS based project. So let's come to the topic. After completing this lecture, we will learn the simple definition of GIS, types of GIS, what is desktop GIS, desktop GIS software, ArcGIS, ArcGIS Pro, QGIS, and what is SuperMap by desktop 10i. Simple definition of GIS. If you search in Google, you will get many more definition, a paragraph, what is GIS? It, it means data manipulation, organization, pupil, hardware, software, and many more. But if I shortly say, uh, you can identify the definition of GIS inside of its name. Its name is GIS, which means Geographic Information System. So the easy definition of GIS is from myself, a system that provides geographic information. Any kind of system which provides geographic information is known as GIS. Uh, if you Google what is GIS, they will say uh, it means data manipulation, it's a system. Combination of hardware, software, it is also a system. So if we make it short, then it will be a system that provides geographic information. It's easy and simple definition of GIS. Don't make it more difficult. It's very enjoyable and easy field. You can use it in your sector. GIS is enjoyable and interesting subject. Now let's see some example of GIS. As I said, a system that provides geographic information is known as GIS. As example, geographic software. Obviously, geographic software provides geographic information, not only information. We can do geographic analysis by using geographic software. So this is known as GIS, say ArcGIS, QGIS, SuperMap, Google Map. Who does not know about Google Map? In where we will get location-based information of any area around the world. So it is providing location-based information, geographic information. So this is GIS. If I say deeply, it is web GIS. Uber, we already have discussed about it. This is obviously also GIS. So in where we will get geographic information of driver and our pickup location in a map. So this is a type of GIS and many more. <laughs> now let's see types of GIS. Based on web and publicly shared option, there are two types of GIS. One is desktop GIS, which is non-shareable. Another one is web GIS, which is shareable. Say you have done your GIS-based project, your GIS-based analysis in your GIS software, which is considered as desktop GIS. You can't share your GIS project with other people as a live update uh, without web GIS. If you want to share your GIS output, your GIS project output with other people by using desktop GIS, all you can do is just using your pen drive or using your online drive. 
but you can't share your GIS analysis output as a live publicly or group of people in internet. For this purpose, you need to go to web GIS by which you can easily share your desktop GIS output to other people, say publicly or group of people by using this web GIS platform. But before we start web GIS, obviously we need to do desktop GIS work. We need to create the map, then we can share this in WebGIS by creating WebGIS based project. WebGIS is a web based GIS software. Don't be afraid. You need to do all the time web programming to do any WebGIS project. We can create WebGIS project without knowing any programming, also. I have a course on that WebGIS server. So don't be afraid. WebGIS is also an interesting platform in where you can share your desktop GIS output to any pupil around the world. So this is the types of GIS. One is desktop GIS and another one is web GIS. What is desktop GIS? Desktop GIS is a mapping software that is installed onto and runs on a personal computer and allows user to display, query, update, and analyze data about geographic locations and the information linked to those locations. Desktop GIS software. We have many <laughs> types of desktop GIS software, the ArcGIS, QGIS, SuperMap I Desktop 10i, and many more. Now let's see one by one. <laughs> ArcGIS desktop includes the following Windows desktop application, Arc Catalog, Arc Map, Arc Globe, Arc Scene. You can do uh, 2D map related work in Arc Map. For your 3D map related work, you need to go with Arc Globe and Arc Scene. ArcGIS Pro, which is the Pro version of ArcGIS, in where uh, desktop GIS application from history. Uh, with ArcGIS Pro, you can explore, visualize, and analyze data, create 2D maps and 3D scenes, and share your work to your ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise portal easily. Now, QGIS. QGIS is basically uh, previously known as Quantum GIS, is a free and open source cross platform desktop geographic information system application that supports viewing, editing, and analysis to your spatial data. Now, here is our SuperMap IDEX Top 10i. SuperMap focuses on providing innovative GIS platform software and solution for various industries such as uh, smart city, land management, real estate, urban planning, pipeline management, public service, etc. For desktop GIS, SuperMap provides us SuperMap IDEX Top 10i software. You can get the de detail of the SuperMap IDEX Top 10i software in my website, Sharia GIS School. And if you want to learn SuperMap IDEX Top 10i easily, you can enroll in my course if you want, which is SuperMap IDEX Top 10i for smart GIS work. The course title is like that because this is really a smart interface of GIS in where uh, I like it personally, in where we can do easily any kind of GIS work very easily, even 3D related model building. It makes more easy in SuperMap IDEX Top 10i. You can learn this if you want. So this is desktop GIS. Now maybe you are uh, you have a question. Then what is Web GIS? How to learn Web GIS? Right? Let me tell you about this. What is Web GIS? <laughs> we have short time. In this few minutes, I need to show you something more interesting in GIS, which is Web GIS. WebGIS means the combination of web and GIS. Let's play with WebGIS in the field of GIS. After completing this lecture, we will learn what is WebGIS, definition, text of GIS, key elements of WebGIS, basic steps of WebGIS, model of WebGIS, advantages of WebGIS. Sorry, actually, I was at hospital with my mother and a little sick today. I just come here to attend this workshop for my learners, for my participants. Uh, sorry for this interruption. What is WebGIS? 
what is webgis webgis is the combination of two system number one is web or internet and another one is gis which is geographic information system it is a technology that is used to display and analyze spatial data on the internet not in the desktop gis software we can do our gis what in the internet in the web this is known as web gis as example google map in where we can easily identify any location by clicking any location we can get the pop-up window which is nicely view the uh, information the attributes of a particular information even we can see the picture also it's not it so it combines the advantages of both internet and also gis so this is the power of web gis in where uh, we don't need to buy any software we don't need to learn any difficult gis terms we can easily use web gis interface say in google map uh, before using google map have you learned have you trained about google map it's very easy so web gis is very easy to learn easy to understand so it offers public a new means to access special information without owning any expensive gis software Now let's see the definition of WebGIS. WebGIS defined as a distributed information system comprising at least a server and a client. In here, in this image, we can see this portal is the server which manages everything about your WebGIS project and it will distribute the client, your WebGIS output. And who are your client? The client is a web browser, say. Here we can see the web browser, desktop, or a device, which means the mobile apps also. A desktop application, say in Google Map, uh, from their server, we can see Google Map in our computer. And the desktop application, for desktop application example, we can say Google Earth. For this purpose, we need to install this Google Earth application in our desktop. Without this, we can't use Google Earth. And mobile application, it's very easy your gmap apps in your android phone or iphone and many more the server has a url so that clients can find it own on the web say in case as uh, in case of google map without knowing the link of google map can you can you use it the link is www.googlemap.com so the server has a url so that client can find it on the web Now let's see desktop GIS versus web GIS. Simple a desktop GIS is installed and operates on a personal computer. User can only display, update, query, and analyze geographic data locally. A desktop GIS is not accessible on a server or externally, therefore limiting access to how and where it can be managed. Compare this to a web GIS and an organization can reduce lead times not only times they can reduce their cost also webgis creates the way of access for the group of users webgis can be used by dozens or hundreds of users simultaneously say in my previous lecture i already said in your desktop gis work if you create your desktop gis project by individual you want to share your this webgis project with a group of people what you need to do. All you can do is just using your pen drive or print your this map and share with other user by a group meeting. So in WebGIS, you can easily share your GIS output simultaneously to the society, uh, say to a group of people, anyone can see your this GIS out output by using the power of WebGIS. So this is the facilities of WebGIS rather than desktop GIS. Present is desktop GIS, the future is WebGIS. Now let's see the key elements of WebGIS. There are five essential elements in every WebGIS application. This includes a web application, digital base map, operational layer, say a web application without creating a web interface, uh, can you create your WebGIS project in where you are going to our, our upload your this GIS project. So before that, we need to develop the web application. After that, we need to create a digital base map by using our text of GIS. Then we need to create operational layer with its database. 
After that, we need to add some tasks and tools. Say in Google Map, uh, we just have a map. We can't browse it. We can't zoom in, zoom out. All we can do is just see this map and see the feature. Will it be fruitful or is it uh, usable to publicly? No, for this purpose, we need to add some task and tools, uh, at least zoom tool, uh, map panning tool, and many tools if you want to add more tools like uh, attribute table, information table by clicking, you can add these tools in your WebGIS project. This is the another essential elements of WebGIS. This is task and tools. One or more geodatabase. As I already have said, GIS means map with information. Without information, without database, we can't consider this as GIS. Now let's see basic steps of any WebGIS project. First of all, we need to create the map, map creation. Then second step is web interface development. After that, we need to create a web interface. Then we need to upload our that map into this web interface, which is developed. Then we need to add tools and access for user. We need to create the access of a particular user or group of user, or we can create access publicly. Now let's see the model of WebGIS. This is the model of WebGIS and the core area of WebGIS is this one, which is server. And at the back end, we have a WebGIS specialist who is managing everything about this WebGIS project and this core point uh, by using GIS server and author. And this area is the user for whom we are creating this WebGIS project. User can be a GIS user, a mobile user, or a web user who can use this web GIS um, just only by using any browser, say Google Chrome or Mozilla, whatever. Now let's see advantages of web GIS. Web GIS is a powerful mapping and analytical functionality expresses within a web browser. Because of the increased power of customization, web GIS can now better support learning standards oriented content in the natural and social science. No longer is it necessary to teach learner how to use GIS before teaching the disciplinary content of interest. So say, uh, have you need to learn about Google Map or do you need to complete any training before using Google Map? So WebGIS is very easy to use. WebGIS introduced distinct advantages over traditional desktop GIS, including the following a global reach, large number of users, better cross-platform capability, low cost as average by the number of users, easy to use, unified updates, diverse applications, and so on. So this is all about WebGIS. Thanks for watching and obviously always enjoy GIS and play with GIS in your field. It could be architecture, it could be civil engineer, whatever. You can play and enjoy with GIS in your field.